We've been in the midst of a series entitled The Courage to Commit Volume 2. I got the keys. I love what I hear people saying in this season. Pastor Mike, you got so many keys and so many principles, and every time I turn around, it's up, it's up, it's up, and it's stuck. But I can't help but get excited. Why, Pastor Mike? This isn't just a sermon series. I'm going to go ahead and prophesy. This is a book. This is a devotional. It's a mini-series worth on vlogs. It is changing and revolutionizing so many people's lives, and I believe it's worth repeating. So each week, whether it's me or Pastor Darius, we're going to stand right here, and we're going to say what we feel God is calling us to say, even if it takes us 15 weeks all the way back to the beginning. And what's that, Pastor Mike? Principle of generosity. <laughs> the principle of generosity is a heart that's willing to give that leads to a life that freely gives. I am a giver. I'm going to keep saying it and I'm going to tell it everywhere I go. It's easy for me to teach about it because nothing changes. It's my heart. It's who I am. Giving is what I do. Shout out to Pastor John at 3D Church, one of my spiritual sons in the faith. Uh, kind of suffered a mild heart attack this week. You may remember a couple weeks ago, we went to Atlanta and preached at his church. A lot of stress on him. Suffered a mild heart attack and God willing, he's so much better now and doing so much better today. And I told him, I said, man, I think you need to take some time off. And the doctor suggested it too. But we just didn't tell him to take some time off. I kind of spent today walking through strategy with him. Well, week one, we're going to do this. Week two, I would do this. Week three, I would smush this in right here. Week four, so-and-so, so-and-so. And, -so, so -and, -so. and we've been kind of walking through it. See, to all my creatives, to all my intellectuals, that's me freely giving of my intellectual property freely given of my intellectual property, but I want to pause and parenthetically digress because I told you three weeks ago that repetition breeds what? Revelation. Someone put that in the comments. Repetition breeds revelation, which means the more you do it, the more you discover or the more that is revealed. I'm looking at people in this room from nurses to doctors to reporters to artists to activists to executives to entrepreneurs to teachers. Every person in this room to actress, actors, musicians, uh, uh, cinematographers are in the back, photographers, creatives. There are so many people. There is an amalgam of individuals in the room who would testify to the fact that the more you begin to do what it is you do, the more you learned about what you do. I'm going to say that again. I want you to put that in your notes. The more you do what you do, the more you learned about what you do. That's the first point. Point number two, the more you do what you do, the more you learn about what it takes to do what you do. Point number three, the more you do what you do, the more you understand about the things that come with assisting what you do. Those were three points that I could stop preaching right there. The more you do what you do, the more you learn about what you do. The more I speak, the more I learn. Take your time, Mike. When I was younger, my preaching was so fast. Can I suggest to somebody, four minutes into the sermon, I'm already saying, slap your neighbor, high five. Tell them God's getting ready to do it. Because I thought the quicker I got to the shout, the better the message was. But the older I get, I don't mind taking my time because I know where I'm going. I done took this route before. It's almost like going out of town on vacation. The first time you go to Orlando to go to Disney World, you're kind of panicking because you don't know the freeway, don't know the highways, don't know where the restaurants are, don't know what to expect. But after you done been three or four times, you don't even pack the same no more. You just say, no, I get that when I get there. It's a Walmart on the third street to the left because I know more about what I do. So what am I discovering? The more I preach about the principle of generosity, the more I'm discovering about generosity. And there is a pro and a con to everything I teach. What's the pro, PMJ? I'm raising up a generation of people who have a heart that's willing to give that leads to a life that freely gives. The con is if you don't have the principle of discernment, you freely give it to people who don't deserve it. Did I just say anything to bless anybody? So what am I realizing? Yes, I have the principle of generosity, but what I'm trying to get my church to understand is that these principles do not work isolated from the others. 
Did I just say something that just blessed anybody? These principles don't work isolated from the others. Let me make it make sense like this. Your life is the remote, but without the batteries, the remote is useless. So what I'm saying is this message or this series that I find myself in, it's not a la carte. It's a combo. No, no, it's all except, it's all or what? Nothing. So what am I telling you? You cannot have the principle of generosity, but not have a mindset principle. Meaning that what I believe about myself often determines what I believe about God. Or the principle of multiplication that suggests God did not just simply call us to maintain, but he called us to what? The principle of freedom suggests that freedom is not doing whatever you want to do, but doing what you were created to do the principle of partnership suggests that trusting the wrong people will make you worse but trusting the right people will help you what when the principle of transformation suggests that the gift or my gift will change others but my character will what change me the principle of the pick suggests that who you choose to be in your life will either be an asset or what Assault. The principle of breakthrough suggests that true breakthrough is not when you go to the next level, but when God shows you why you are stuck on your now level. Somebody shout now level. Now, I'm going to say this, and none of my millennials are going to get this message. None of my millennials are going to understand this because you live in a PS5, PS4 generation, but everybody who understands Nintendo might get excited. See, because in Nintendo, we didn't have all of the games you guys have. We had Mario. We had Mario Brothers. And here's the blessing. Mario Brothers and Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, that was Genesis, Sonic the Hedgehog. But when you look at Nintendo and Genesis, Mario and Sonic were our go-to games. The only problem is the first and second levels were easy. And I don't know about you, but most of us got stuck on that third level trying to figure out how do I get Sonic over this flying robotic or trying to figure out once as long as I was on the surface I was Mario killing that thing I knew how to hit my head on the brick and get the mushroom and I grow get the fire and I shoot stuff learn how to move fast my issue was with when I went down the tunnel and got underground and then this fire dragon starts shooting me and I had to jump over his fiery darts y'all missed your shout jump over his fiery doubts but it was a problem if I jumped too high I hit my head on the spikes if I didn't jump high enough I got hit by the fire then the whole while the bridge would be coming and going and I used to sit back and like I cannot figure this out so I did what everybody else did was reset the game and what I would do is master and learn how to have fun on the levels I knew. But I never stopped to learn the levels I did not know. Breakthrough is not you being the bomb at what you always do. Breakthrough is when you discover why you can't progress past where you are. Breakthrough is not when you get a promotion. Breakthrough is why you broke, understanding why you broke and how you can met and how you can flip the season that you're in. Everybody wants to go to another level. True breakthrough is when you can say, God, if you never take me off this level, I've learned how to maximize the level that I'm on. It's called breakthrough. Then we talked about the principle of discernment. The principle of discernment is our ability to recognize the difference between what's dead and what's dormant. Then we talked about the principle of the detour. The principle of the detour states that God can use an undesired route to get you to a desired result. Then we talked about last week something to me that just flipped everybody's mindset. It's the principle of honor. It's the principle of honor. What is the principle of honor, Pastor Mike? The principle of honor suggests that how I express the value of others determines if I experience favor or famine. How I express the value of others determines if I experience favor or Famine. We discovered that favor, excuse me, favor is not just something that is applied to every individual. <clears throat> favor is not just something that is applied to every individual, but rather favor is something that you acquire, not because of who you are now, but because of who God is calling you to be later. 
God never grants you favor for what you're currently in. He grants you favor because what you were before you got in it was the proof that he was about to take you where he's calling you. It is called the principle of honor. And what is the principle of honor? The principle of honor suggests that how I express the value of others is determines if I experience favor or famine. Now let's talk about this deductively. Who in their heart has been trying their best to practice honor this week? That's rich right there. In the comments right now, who's been trying to express honor? Who's doing their best to make sure Pastor Mike, I never thought about that the way I think about it now. I never stopped to realize all of the places where I could have practiced. Somebody shout honor. Now, here's what's crazy and sorry so much. My eyes are just watering like crazy tonight. Honor. What are we talking about? The principle of honor. What I've discovered is the places in my life where I did not express honor, I experienced horror. I'm going to say that again. The places of my life where I did not express honor, I ended up experiencing horror. Okay? So put this in your notes if you don't mind. I want you to write honor. And somebody in the comments, if you don't mind, be my uh, personal assistant today. Okay? On one side, write honor. On the other side, write horror. Okay? Under honor, I want you to put dream. Under horror, put nightmare. <clears throat> All right? Under, under dream, I want you to put hero. Under nightmare, I want you to put monster. Mm -hmm. Under hero, I want you to put save. Under monster, I want you to put destroy. Now you get a picture. Now you get a picture of what happens in your life if you choose honor or dishonor. The places you choose to dishonor. You turn that person into a hip, to a villain or into a monster who is hell bent on destructing your life. They take what was supposed to be a blessing. Now your life becomes a nightmare and you live in horror. Most of our relationships are horrible because there was no honor. See, you can either be honorable or horrible. I'm preaching to three folk, and you ain't got to shout. That's why I can't wait. Show my sanctuary. That's why I can't wait till my real church come back so we can praise church because there are two types of people sitting in the room and watching online. One of y'all about to go crazy because you're like, I know I've been honorable, which means what the devil meant for evil. God's getting ready to shift for my good. But then two of y'all just got nervous because as much honorable as you tried to be, it's like you've been dealing with a whole lot of horrible. And what I've discovered is whenever you lack honor, it causes horror. Can I preach to somebody in here? This is why we discovered last week that he can only perform but a few minutes. So let me free you because there were, we said this yesterday. I'm going to see if somebody can put it in the comments and shout it to me. When honor is low, faith is slow. When honor is low, faith is what? Slow. So let me free you real quickly, which means that there's no honor. Faith is low and low faith produces what? Disbelief. Disbelief blocks your ability to connect. See, because whenever God wants to perform a miracle in you, there's one ingredient you got to bring, which is faith. God's not going to deliver you and fight you at the same time. I'm preaching to three of y'all if y'all receive it. God's not going to deliver you and fight you. Have you ever discovered, and it blew my mind as I'm teaching my babies how to swim, that the swim instructor told me one of the number one causes of drowning is trying to save somebody who can't swim. They said the average person who jumps in the water to save somebody from drowning dies and they know how to swim. And it's not because they don't know how to swim. It's because they don't have the time to swim because the person who is not equipped is so busy trying not to die that they end up pushing them underwater trying to save themselves which is why you got to be careful who you connect with because if you trying to get where God is calling you to be but you're connected to people who don't honor you don't respect you and don't see you for who you are while they're trying to save themselves they will end up killing you Somebody ought to just type. He's preaching to me today. He's talking. It is called honor. Somebody type shout honor. 
And that's what I'm trying to get my church to realize now that we must be a people who live and walk in honor. We must be a people who live and walk in honor. You want to know what I discovered? This is so rich. This is, this is, this is so rich, so rich, so rich, so rich, so rich. You do not properly understand honor until you have to give it to somebody who's horrible. You can turn the monitors down on this stage, they're ringing. You don't properly understand honor, D, until you have to submit it to somebody who's horrible. No, this is critical. David blesses my life, and maybe the depth of David's anointing was matched by the depth of his honor. I'm preaching to three, y'all. See, maybe God knew I could take David high because he remained exceptionally low when Saul was trying to kill him. Wasn't it David who said, if I wanted to kill you, I could Am I preaching to anybody from across the world? David said, no, while you were asleep, but while you was in this cave, I was right behind you. And if I did not honor you. And, but conversely, we see Noah who's drunk in a tent and his blood don't honor him. So his blood tends to what? Uncover him. I'm from the free five of y'all. I see two stories and two principles. I see two men who are absolutely in the wrong, but I see one person who his blood who uncovers them, and another one who's not his kin who does cover him. And that lets me know that honor does not require blood, it requires humility. I'm preaching to three of y'all, and I'm only preaching to five folk, and I'm going to say this, and had Rock City been here, we would have towed this new church all the way up. People so quick to talk about how weak you are and don't have a clue, baby, I'm perceived weak to y'all. But the people who call me weak understand that at any moment, if I did not honor you, I could have blew all this up in the first place because I know, no, I'm preaching to three of y'all who can just tell the truth that I ain't heard some stuff, I know some stuff, and the only thing that's keeping me from going crazy on you is the fact that unlike you, I possess... So let's talk about it. Somebody shout honor. Can I give you a new principle today? This is good. Jill, Jill, can I give you a new principle? Quran, Deacon Quran, Rock, can I give you a new principle today? Principle number 317. Principle number 317, the principle of boundaries. This is rich. The principle of boundaries suggests that you cannot be everything to everybody. That's enough. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. The principle of boundary suggests, this is good, that you cannot be everything to everybody. Jesus teaches us this principle. Why, PMJ? Because Jesus lived a life of boundaries. He said, I'm going to be whatever the crowd needs to me to be in a sense. So we have the, the 5,000. Then that's the crowd. He breaks the crowd down to a community, which is the 500. Then he tells the 500, meet me in a certain place so we can experience Pentecost and you get the 70. Out of the 70, he says, I'm only going to teach and pour into the 12. And out of the 12, he says, three of y'all are qualified for leadership. I'm going to call you the core. Put this in your notes if you didn't want a part of my level series. I'm going to give you boundaries. 3, 12, 70, 500, 5,000. That's rich. 3, 12, 70, 500, 5,000. Okay? Let's define them. 3 represents the core. These are they that see me transfigure. Michael, these are they that can handle not just what I do, but who I truly am. And what I've discovered is y'all keep bringing 500 into three conversations. Michael, three is the core. Somebody say core. Terrell, what I've discovered in my life, Rob, what I've discovered in my life, what I continue to discover in my life is that I, one of the greatest issues of Pastor Mike Jr. is that I'm just me all the time. 
That's one of my issues. I'm just me all the time. I'm just as crazy. D, you work here. You know I'm crazy. Same crazy I am up here, the same crazy I am up there. And, and, and that's the problem. My team sometimes is afraid to bring big people around. They'll be like, no, no, just keep, keep them out because, you know, at, at any time he, PMJ can come out, Pastor Mike come out. What I've discovered is lately I just haven't had that issue because I now have done my own appraisal. And I realized three, 12, I'm going to give it to you quick, three core, 12 circle, 70 collaboration, 500 community, 5,000 crowd. Three core can handle who I really am. 12 circle can be around me enough but don't get as much. 70 is who I collaborate with. My 500 is my community. They know me but don't know me, know me. We're cordial. When they need me, if I'm available, I can come through. 5,000, that's the world. So can I free you? If three is the core, 12 is the circle, 70 is collaboration, 500 community, and 5,000 is the crowd, outside of each one of them, put a price. Because to each level is an admission. <laughs> I had somebody tell me the other day, they said, Pastor Mike, ain't no telling how crazy your concerts would be. We went to one concert, it was 4,000 people there. I said, yeah, but I've yet to sell a ticket. I said, so in this season of my life, I'm ready to see James that if I put a flyer out and said, come see Pastor Mike Jr. perform, but it's $35, who shows up? And I'm starting to discover that there are certain areas of your life that you keep thinking your circle is strong, but the admission is free. If it don't cost you nothing to leave me, then that determines the level at which I can let you have access. I'm preaching today. Hear me when I say this. What am I trying to get you to realize? No, no, no. Pastor Mike, I just want to be close to you. I'm so sorry. You don't have enough to pay to get into that circle. And I'm not talking about financially. I'm talking about you ain't sold enough tears. You ain't prayed and fasted with me enough. You ain't interceded for me enough. You ain't seen me on the flow. You've only seen me at the mountain. And what I've discovered is people who deserve you at the mountain, that's the 5,000. But keep in mind, when Jesus gets to a point where he's about to lose it, he tells the three, come here. Woo. Jesus teaches us that you cannot be everything to everybody. I just need a thousand people to just type that just in case somebody sleep in the chat. I cannot be everything to everybody. I want to free y'all. This is good tonight. Oh my God, this is good. I cannot be everything to everybody. Now let me free you, and this is going to mess a whole lot of people up. Well, Pastor Mike, why did he give me so many skills? Why did he give me skills, discernment, wisdom, knowledge, and gifting for a plethora of areas if I can't use them for everybody? I'm so glad you asked. I'm so glad you asked because I've discovered, all right, all my cooks give me a what what. All right, cooks, you're going to bless me. Any good cook knows that when it's really time to cook, cook, you got to know where all your stuff at. Now, everybody who play in the kitchen and always doing stuff, have you ever got ready to cook, cook, but then you had played so, so much, you didn't know what certain stuff was? So now you burning stuff that you know how to cook because you're spending too much time looking for stuff that ain't in place. That's why some of us are so stressed out. It's because your discernment that you need for this level is stuck in a conversation it should have never been in. Your wisdom for your next season is depleted because you've been up all night talking to people who ain't going to take the advice even if you wanted them to. And what I've discovered is God gives you all those skills not so you can be spread thin, but so you can be whole and effective for when it's your season to walk in all of it. Michael, am I preaching to anybody in here? So what I've discovered, I'm about to free seven of y'all so you won't have no pressure. I cannot be everything 
to everybody. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to go ahead and screen record this. And I just need you to put this on your page because you're too kind hearted to say it yourself. Attention, whoever is on this page, the person's page that you are on does not have the strength or the courage in this capacity to tell you this. So they brought me on their page to say it for them. As of this day, I now realize I cannot be everything to everybody. I tried to give you advice, but you were hell bent on doing what you want to do. I tried to be there for you. I laid there and cried with you, but you continue to walk back into stuff that almost drove you crazy. So do me a favor. Since you ain't going to listen and receive what I'm trying to do anyway, may the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one for another, but for the people who are ready to take advantage of all that God has placed in me. Get ready to go to another level. Get ready to go higher. Get ready to be blessed. Get ready to experience the best season of your life because God's getting ready to do something fresh in your life. I'm Pastor Mike McClure Jr. and I approve that message. I cannot be everything to everybody. The life of Jesus is showing us that we owe everybody love, but we do not owe everyone equal access. That's rich. That's rich. The life of Jesus critically, I'm going to say it better, the life of Jesus crystal, no, I'm not going to say it like that. The life of Jesus is essential in teaching us that we cannot be everybody, I'm going to say it better, the life of Jesus is essential at showing us that we owe everybody love, but we do not owe everybody equal access. That's rich right there. And I want to free you because seven of y'all keep letting people guilt you into levels they should have never been on because they keep telling you stuff like it's not fair. It's not fair. Uh oh, here's another one. Well, I've been here. But I told you my stuff. I never asked you. You started talking before I even said what was real. So I've discovered this is going to bless somebody. I owe everybody love. Put, put scripture on it. Romans 13 and 8. Owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. God never said they had to be close. He said, you just got to love them. Michael, can I free you? Can I free you? And they don't get to determine what love looks like. I'ma just preach because I don't think y'all like me. I don't think y'all like me. The Bible says, oh, nothing to no man but what? Love them. And what I've discovered is we spend too much time trying to give people what God never even commanded you to give them. Can I free you? Does God not love everybody? Is everybody going to make it in? Because access ain't guaranteed. I'm preaching it. God said, I'm not even going to give everybody access to heaven. Why are you giving everybody access to your peace? I'm preaching. I need seven of y'all to just put in the comments, access denied. Access denied. As a matter of fact, Dre, we are virtual. Go ahead and throw it on the screen right there. That right there is a calling signal. That's what your FaceTime look like, right? And it shows you the name of who's calling. And if you can see right there, that is the past calling you. The past does not represent just past stories. It represents past people, past feelings, past emotions. And the old you, because you tried your best to be kind, would have hit that green button. But the new you hitting that red button, and you're not even going to let it go. No, I'm at a certain level in my life. I'm not even going to let it ring so you can think I ain't see it. I'm pressing no on two so you can know very clearly access denied. I need a thousand folk to just type access denied. My peace is too important. My joy is too important. My favor is too important. My future is too important. My destiny is too important to allow people 
who have not been proven to have access. Pastor Mike, this ain't God. No man of God, this is not God. Man of God, this is not God. You're right. Your God, G-A-W-D, want everybody to have access. But my God, G-O-D, said in Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So scripture consistently informs us about the need of boundaries. I'm preaching. I owe you nothing but to love you. I do not owe you access. I don't owe you access. You don't have to get to know me. I just, you can, I'm gonna say, they don't have to get to know you. Well, you know, before we go any further, I wanna make sure I get to know No, no, I'm not here for that. No, we don't have to be friends at church. No, God bless you. I, I, I want to be a community of people who love each other. But I, just because I sit next to you on Sunday, just because I sing on stage with you, what Pastor James told us on the praise team, we got to come together. Yes, come together centered around the vision. But who you dating and where you live and what you like to do in your personal time ain't got nothing to do with people. You just see once a week for 30 minutes. Why are you giving a 30-minute Negro 24-hour-a-day access like y'all tight as y'all are when truth be told, you really don't even know who you standing? I'm preaching. Y'all ain't got to like me because I'm trying to free you. This is why we think we all experience church hurt. All of us think we experience church hurt because we are giving access to people that we should have been in assignment with. We chose to be personal. And if I choose to be personal, you hurt me. The church didn't hurt me. I'm preaching if you receive that. And what I'm trying to free the church from, am I going too deep? What I'm trying to free the church from, Elder Reed, what I'm trying to free the church from, Elder Tristan, is this, 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 this illicit ideology that suggests I can walk around boundaryless and every attack that comes is the devil. The scripture says an angry man is like a city without walls. Well, in other words, a person who is always angry is boundaryless. I'm preaching if y'all receive that. Y'all don't like me today. This is why 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Boundaries are not about giving up on people, but giving people up to God. Boundaries are not about giving up on people, but rather you giving people up to God. The reason you need boundaries is because if you don't set a proper boundary, you're going to be trying to do God's job. It ain't your job to deliver them. It's your job to deliver them. Y'all miss what I just said. It is not your job to deliver them. It's your job to deliver them. I'm going to make it make sense. It ain't your job to bring them out. It's your job to bring them to the one who can bring them out. He didn't say if you be lifted up. But he said if I be lifted up. And the problem is when you try to be the one that they are coming to, you now put yourself in direct opposition of God. Why, Pastor Mike? Am I doing all right? Without boundaries, the people that mean the most to you get the least from you. Without boundaries, the people that mean the most to you get the least from you. There are levels. There are levels. There's levels. There are certain people I trust with my nakedness, that, I, that I'll tell a joke around, I'll laugh around. Conversely, sometimes the people I trust to have fun with, I wouldn't trust with my kids. Elder Candace, Deacon Corey, got a level of trust from me that's so deep that if anything was to happen to me, I trust my family. That if I go so no, no, hey, Corey, Corey, every time I hit the road, Corey, if something happens, to make sure you take care of the boys, watch the boy. Candace, can you, that's another level of trust. On another level, I trust Tiffany in a way I don't trust nobody else. If I feel tormented, I'm going to tell Tristan. I'm not going to tell the prayer team. 
Now, if Tristan tell the prayer team, he is no longer qualified to be have that level of access to me. I'm acting like my church here right there, because this would be the part where somebody would just be like, ooh, and my sister would have, see, um, this is where the church would have went ham, because I've discovered boundaries are not about rejection, but responsibility. Boundaries are not about rejection. Boundaries are about responsibility. So when you fail to set a boundary, you say to God, I'm irresponsible. If I do not set and keep boundaries, I'll never own what belongs to me. If I do not set boundaries, I will never own what belongs to me. Me setting a boundary ain't about rejection, it's about responsibility. It's about responsibility. In certain places of my life right now, I'm closed in the circle, regardless of how people feel about it. No, you're not gonna make me feel bad because You've proven to me there's certain boundaries. I just don't, I don't, I don't rock with you like that. No, and you want to discover people are so fake that even when you be sincere, they think you tripping. So pe fake people will be like, no, you my girl. Man, you my guy. Oh, that's bestie. Them my folks right there. Then get in another conversation and dog you out. But then a good person will walk up to you and say, I love you so much, I just don't rock with you like that. Then you'll look at them and say, oh, they think they're better than everybody else. Because the culture has conditioned our ear that we feel as if anything that is not what we desire is wrong. <laughs> no. So if I don't set a boundary, am I doing okay? If I'm doing all right, I just need you to type preach PMJ in the comments right there. Somebody shout preach PMJ. So I want to free you. So... Boundaries are not about rejection, they're about responsibility. I'm going to say it again. Boundaries are not about rejection, they are about responsibility. So if I fail to set boundaries, I am saying in no uncertain terms to God, I am irresponsible. And when I prove to God that I am irresponsible, that makes me replaceable. Every person in the Bible who was irresponsible and did not set boundaries, we saw them be replaced. Yes. Hear me when I say this. The reason David lost his child is because he did not have a boundary. He should have been at battle, but he's at home on the balcony and he sends for Bathsheba. There should have been some level of boundaries. Pause. I want to parenthetically digress because if, if I preach in an abstract sense, I, I'm, I'm deal held responsible for what you believe. What's a boundary, PMJ? A boundary is when I place a person or restrictions around me that protect me from me. Did, did you catch that? That's a boundary. That's a boundary. If I ever meet with you, anybody in this room, if I ever meet with you, male or female, the door going to be open. That's a boundary. Every four or five minutes, somebody going to walk past the door. That's a boundary. Because I've discovered if we're in a room and the door closed and 30 minutes pass, you can leave and say whatever you want to say happen in that room. Now I'm having to defend myself publicly knowing good and well nothing happened, but I didn't have a This clip has been seen over 30 million times on social media And it was something I said during the pandemic you got an alarm on your house because you love it You got an alarm on your car because you love it, but when it comes to your peace your name and Everything else that comes with you. It's not it's not there are no Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Can I ask you a question? Do you want to be replaceable? Then set boundaries. Set boundaries. Set boundaries. Set boundaries. You know what I discovered? Whenever I do too much in front of people, whether I like it or not, their perception of me is going to change. That doesn't mean they're going to leave. That just means even if they stay, they're going to perceive things a little better. They're going to perceive things a little different. And what I've discovered is, I hope you can handle this, what I am now having to do, which is means which a lot of people and all of you and all of you watching me at home, you're about to have to start doing, which is going to be very painful. You're going to have to start setting boundaries to people who've had access. 
y'all don't like me today. Y'all don't like me today. So that means, I need you to catch this. I need you to catch this, okay? Take, for instance, this recording. Show the room, Dre. I want you to see the room. I want you to see the room right there. Look at this room. Now, I want you to, Dre, if you don't mind, there it is right there. Show a quick shot of where we used to record downstairs. See how many people was in that room? When we came upstairs, I took all of those people out. Not because something was wrong with them, but because there's something wrong with me. Pastor Mike, make that make sense. You have no idea that when I came up to preach today, it almost ruined praise and worship. Why did we fade out of praise and worship and make it seem like, man, worship was so good, but while they're worshiping, we want to get you some information? It's because when I came up, my microphone went crazy. It got so bad, we had to stop everything and figure it out. I don't have the patience, the temperament, or the maturity to have all my people standing here, yet stuff is going wrong. With that many people in the room, if a mistake happened, I'm going to start fussing. I'm going to act a fool because I never want my people to see something that's not of excellence. So to protect me from dishonoring the people who love me, I said I don't want nobody in here except for the people who've seen me panic. And you know what I discovered? The people who understand gonna say, Pastor Mike, now that you said that, I respect that. The people who just wanna be in the room may be in their feelings. That's not my responsibility. Because had you been in the room when this happened last week, and I had to tell Dre, Dre, don't do that again. I said, oh, give me what I watched for, give me what I wanted. Then you would have went home like, well, Pastor Mike was mean to Dre, wasn't it? And Dre would have been at home like, no, when we in there, we got a saying, when, the, when we in war, when the bullets fly and feelings don't matter. Just tough it out. We're trying to figure it out. Now you sitting at home like, I did not know he was that mean. How else do you think we birthed all this? Ain't no pregnancy pretty. Michael, what I'm discovering is, so now I know me, and because I know me, I know what to set around me. They're heavy. They're heavy. They're heavy. This heavy. Mm-hmm. In the, in the physical world, offense, somebody say offense. A boundary, let's just use an example as a fence. A boundary is a fence. In a physical world, a fence or some other kind of structure usually represents a boundary. In the spiritual world, fences are invisible, but you can create a strong fence with your words. We finna build a fence. You ready? Let me teach you how to spell a bill of fence. Here it is. No. That's it. That's it. That's all. That's everything. That's it. No. No, no, no. Let's practice. Wherever you are right now, I want you to say no. Ready? Go. All right, give me another version of no. Go. Give me a sincere no. Give me I ain't playing no. Give me a you finna mess around and find out no. No. All right, now. Nah. <laughs> hear me, hear me, hear me. The most basic boundary setting word is no. No is an invisible fence and no is a complete sentence. There are some places in our lives where we got to learn how to say no. Have you ever said to yourself, this is a lot. People coming at you, this is a lot. Put this in your notes, all right? This is a lot. Whenever you say this is a lot, it is the sign that you may need to set or shift your boundaries with a lot in your life. You missed it. Because in the text, we meet Lot. And God tells Abram, you got to set boundaries with Lot. And ain't it crazy how when you feel overwhelmed, you even use the phrase, this is a lot. So what I'm trying to get you to realize is whenever you feel like what they're bringing you is a lot, you got to set a boundary with that lot. That person is the lot, which is why you feel like it's a lot. All right, so when there's a lot in your life, this is a case in our text today. Abram, who has not yet become Abraham, is struggling because he needs to separate from a lot in his life. Genesis chapter 13, verse 8, verses 9. So Abram said to Lot, let's not have any quarreling between you and me or between your herders and mine, for we are close relatives. Look at verse 9. Is not the whole land before you? 
Let's part ways. Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. And if you go to the right, I'll go to the left. If you grew up in Sunday school, you may already know that Lot is Abram's family member. So we see family fighting in Genesis chapter 13. But let's see what God said in Genesis chapter 12. In chapter 13, they're fighting. But in chapter 12, he tells Abram, this is enough to tell the whole church up, I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. Listen to what he says. If we was at church on Sunday morning, I would have told the whole church, the whole middle section up right there. I will make you a great nation. What does a great nation mean? What comes out of you is going to be on another level. I will bless you, which means I will speak well of you. I will make your name great. Do I need to back that thing up and give it to you again? You missed your first shout of the day. He said, I will make you, which is singular, a great nation, which is plural. You missed it. I will make you, which is singular, a a great nation which is plural which means your children gonna be blessed your grandchildren gonna be blessed Paul parenthetically digress because everything that's under you didn't come out of you so anything that submits to you will be blessed I'm preaching to somebody which is why you can't play about who your pastor is and what church you connected to like them sometimes hate them sometimes but I know the favor of God rests on his life which means everything connected to him shall be great I guess somebody just type, I am a great nation. I, I am what God says I am. I am more than enough. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing. But watch this. But in order for God to do this in his life, this is why I'm frustrated with church. We shout on foolishness, sit on substance. Because the church's so ready to shout, right? It, it would have went like, I want you to just touch five people and tell them, I will. Hmm. Yeah, tell them I will. Yeah. Tell them that God said, I'm going to make you a great nation. <laughs> I'm going to make you a blessed people. <laughs> Your name will be great. <laughs> I wish I had somebody <laughs> who can just touch five people and say, get ready. <laughs> because the best is yet to come. <laughs> God's getting ready. <laughs> to turn it around and you would have been shouting and the person in the comments would have been going crazy then I could have got you even more hyped and said a house got your name on it he's getting ready to make it great another car got your name on it he's getting ready to make it great we've been made endure for the night but I know it's gonna be and you would have told a whole church up and went home not knowing how to get it the only way you get to become a great nation keep in mind this is contextually specific to Abram but we see a principle I want to make sure I say that he said this directly to Abram but we can take it and make it applicable to our lives the only way you get to become a great nation and your name get great and your stuff get blessed is if you keep reading. The Lord said to Abram, get out from your country, your family, and your daddy house. So here we become a generation of church people who's shouting for stuff and don't even realize the prerequisite is a boundary. <laughs> he says, I'm gonna make you a great nation. I'm gonna bless you. Your family gonna be great. It's only one prerequisite. Nobody around you can come, for the most part. I'm preaching, but y'all don't like me today. It's cool. We clearly see God's instruction in Genesis chapter 12. Look what he says. So Abram went up from Egypt to the Negev with his wife and everything he had, and Lot went with him. This is critical. Lot is when we prioritize taking what's familiar over faith. Did God... Not say, get out from your family and the country. But Lot went with him. Lot was familiar. The question I want to ask you today is who you allowed to come with you who should have stayed back. You don't get the promise without stressing over the journey. He says, I need you to disconnect. This shows us that we not only need faith for blessings, but we also need faith for boundaries. Can you put that in your notes? 
God says, I want you to disconnect from everybody and go somewhere. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you why. This is why, Pastor Darius, I believe God didn't tell Abram where he was going. Because he knew Abram's heart would have told his family and they all could have followed. So God says, because I created you and I know you don't got no boundaries. I'm going to only give you half of the information and not give you the rest till you start moving. Pastor Mike, I'm waiting on a prayer. Maybe the answer to your prayer ain't came because you ain't set the right boundary. And God knows if he answered this prayer while you still connected to them, you're going to ruin what he sent you because you're going to bring people who should have been on the outside of the fence. <laughs> but I don't want to be mean. You're not being mean. You're being obedient. Not only do I need faith for blessings, I need faith for boundaries. Ooh, what we fail to separate from in one season may cause us to suffer in another season. Do I need to say that again? What we fail to separate from in one season may cause us to suffer in another season. Can I ask you a question? Are you currently suffering? Because of something you should have been separated from. This is why it hurts me when somebody leaves my church. I'm human. I'm not going to play Superman. Well, you know, God, we got so many members, I don't care. No. If I find out one person leaves my church, I'm ruined the whole day. Ask my staff. Well, what happened? It ain't nothing I can do to fix it. I done called many of people like, look, man, we love you. Man, come on now. You know, don't do that to me, stink. Don't leave me, stink. Come on, twin, don't do that to you, boy. Twin, talking about, what you talking about? Been leading, I ain't talking about. Go on, stay. Then I, I, I hate a little bit. What church you gonna go to? That church, they don't even have no LED screen. You, you know how you start hating on everybody. Just stay with me, man. They can't preach. You know you're gonna miss singing. Oh, come on now. They're not gonna let you sing either. Don't what you doing that for, man? Come on, please. Come on now, they're not going to let you lead no song. No, you can't sing that good. We like you. You know, I'll be trying to be nice, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. Well, the church is too big. We ain't that big. I know you, Sarah. Keisha, Keisha. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you, man. I I, it hurts me. I'm not arrogant. I'm not built like most pastors to walk around with this whole, if they come, they come. If they go, they It matters to me. It matters to me. It matters to me. If I could get my whole role A to Z and you gave me two years to go down the road, I would do that. A second ago before I got a haircut, my barber told me one of my members in a car accident and she's currently paralyzed. I said, FaceTime him. He said, oh. I said, hey, how you doing? I can't tell you how many people inbox me and say, my man, my girlfriend. This morning, man, my girlfriend going through a real bad spell of depression. She watch you all the time. Send me the number. You serious? Hey, what's up, girl? Uh, it matters to me. I'm preaching if you receive it. It matters to me. But once I see that you really feel it was God, oh, I'm done then. Because I've discovered, I'm finna free 70, y'all. If you ever stand in between what God is doing, you become his opposition. So if God is really trying to pull somebody away from you, and you happen to, oh, this is for the preach, because this is why Negroes don't like church right here, because at the average church, the preacher preach about stuff happening, and you get to leave because you always led to feel like you're the victim. And now I want to free you. In some people's life, you a lot. There are people who may hear this message and decide, Pastor Mike, I got to put a boundary around you. Amen. Do what you got to do. I'm not preaching to free you from everything but what I want you to be free from. Because when you really love somebody, you realize if I am the hindrance, I love you past what I need from you. Y'all miss what I just said right there. So what am I trying to get you to realize? When you set boundaries, boundaries ain't about rejection, it's about responsibility. I'm being responsible. I'm being responsible. Why is that important, Pastor Mike? This is important because when we fail to separate from what we fail to separate from in one season can cause us suffering in another season. Can I ask you a question? Somebody say separate. Put this in your notes for me outside the word separate because I want to make sure you think and trip on stuff the right way. 
People, places, things, habits, actions. Because if we ain't careful, that's my only frustration with the new school preaching that a lot of us do. And I did say a lot of us. It's sometimes it's a lot. Of, it's a lot. It's always hater-centered. You know what I'm saying? It's always about a hater or somebody did me wrong. No. I got to separate. I got to separate. I got to separate. I want to make this very practical. I'm a very practical preacher. Very practical preacher. Let's say you just keep eating like you're crazy and have a heart attack. You just set a food boundary. See, my weight is proof that my boundary is low. So now that they're calling me to be in movies and be on certain sets now, I got to starve. Me and James was joking. We was like, hey, man, we eating. We doing whatever we want to do. I'm tired. Stella's going to get whatever body you get this year. I ain't doing nothing. I don't care. He said to me, literally, he says, until they mess around and call and say you're performing. Then today, hey, we want you on. I done ate a salad and a fruit bowl. Then I got in the mirror like, I think it's working. Do you think it's working? Like, nah, it ain't working, player. You stuck. You got 43 days. I'm calling the whole church to a fast right now. I'm like, because I didn't, you don't have to get ready. You stay ready. I should have had a boundary. I'm preaching today. This is good. Let's talk about this. But the land could not support them while they stayed together, but their possessions were so great. So why did Lot, because we never talk about this, Jill, Sierra, why does Lot have to separate from Abram? Not because they messy. They both got too blessed. <laughs> Daniel, Daniel, I don't, I don't never want to perform without Daniel. Like, that's my drummer. I say that possessively. My drummer. My, I don't even say that protectively. I say it possessively. My drummer. He's mine. When my money go to another level, he, no, only me. Out here, my drummer. Hear me when I say this. But if I really speak what I say, I really speak what I say, Chris Brown or somebody, or some big time Lady Gaga, somebody gonna call one day and say, hey, who's that guy on so-and-so, so-and-so? Then I'm gonna have to perform at Greater Beulah. They ain't gonna give him but a couple pennies. Then Lady Gaga get him one like, no, we give him 75,000. I'm gonna have to look at Daniel and be like, all right, man, God bless you. This a lot. This a lot. This a lot right here. But, but that's what happens in the Bible. Let's look at it. Look at what it says right here. Look at what it says. But the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together. That's what I'm trying to build. I'm prophesying while I'm preaching and y'all don't even be catching it. Dre gonna be on BET lot. Daryl may be across the world doing something. James gonna be killing it. Tiffany gonna be out the country flipping houses in Jamaica. D gonna be on Capitol Hill. Darius gonna be with Dr. Phil. He may be on a tour, he may be on a tour, and I'm gonna be standing right here. You know what? And if that person don't hit on when I say, do, 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 and they don't do that, I ain't going to be able to look back and be like, do, 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 do. I'm going to have to be like, I understand. You want to know why? Because I'm speaking growth over everything around me. Now, let me show you what immaturity is. In Genesis chapter 12, we're in Genesis chapter 13. In Genesis chapter 12, God tells Abraham, I'm going to make you a what? I'm going to make you a what? I'm going to make you a great nation. Genesis chapter 13, the nation becomes great. Because they, where they are has no space. So if Abram gets upset with Lot, he's really showing that he didn't believe what God told him. So the day comes when the people who make me comfortable starts growing. And I got to start releasing certain stuff. Watch this. Just because they leave your presence don't mean they leave your heart. Just because your assignments change don't mean we have to be at odds. Detachment shouldn't be grounds um, for disrespect. Disagreement should be grounds for detachment. They don't have to separate because they enemies. Watch this. They people fighting, but they not. 
They staffs fighting, but they not. Their workers are fighting, but they not. But the only reason their workers are fighting is because where they are, this is why I have to release certain people to pass the churches. Because like it or not, this minds. And we're not going to have equal honor. You didn't put equal work in. This is mine. You're not going to have equal honor. No, no, th this is mine. This is my vision. This is how I see it. At a certain point, it becomes too small for what you believe too. So I'm so proud that I don't have to fall out to promote. <laughs> Did I preach this to anybody? I don't have to fall out to promote. God forbid something happened to me. My brother can take off. We don't even have to change the name of the sign. You ain't have to stop telling people who you pass. Who you pass? Pastor McClure. Which one? Just McClure. <laughs> but seriously, I said, I say, but spiritually, folk. He says their procession was so great they could no longer stay together. Put this in your notes. A sign that it's time to set new boundaries is when we lack the motivation to keep old connections. A sign that it's time to set new boundaries is when we lack the motivation to keep old connections. Dan, it's so cold, Pastor D. I'm finna play this out. I don't think y'all catch stuff certain times. That's why I be so silly. Watch this, okay? Um, I'm gonna be God and Abram. You ready? Abram, Lot can't stay here no more. Y'all gonna kill each other. Uh, y'all stuff growing at an exp expansive rate. Hey, Lot. I think you should go that way and I go this way. <laughs> Nowhere do I see Abram say, Lord, can we work this out? Because he realized, even though I tried to change what God said, it don't change what God said. God told me don't even bring you in the first place. So whether I bring, Jesus, whether I leave you right now or I leave you on that side, at a certain point, it's going to have to happen because we both are trying to be what God called us. It's amicable. It only becomes messy when you got to find a reason to do it. Ooh, that, that my shot. I be preaching. Best preacher in the world, man. No, notice in the text that Abram never attempts to make Lot to stay together with him. When we lack boundaries, put this in your notes, we risk losing physical spiritual and emotional assets that's when we lack boundaries you can have boundaries in your dating and your profession and your career I've been placing boundaries in my career right now it's, I've been in meetings all week calls all week zooms all week and mid meeting I would say do me one favor can you step out for a second that's a boundary Mid Zoom, they were asking me questions yesterday that I knew the answers to. I just didn't want to answer on the phone to people's on there. Have you thought about? Ah, uh, we'll talk about that offline. We'll talk about that offline. God bless you. Mm 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 mm. -mm. mm, -mm. You are inflicted the most by the people who have the most intel. See, inflict. You are inflicted with intelligence. That's why your haters don't bother you. They make you mad. The people who turn on you hurt you. Y'all die my mind, shot I'm preaching whether you receive it or not. Abram risked losing his cattle, land, and peace if he didn't deal with light. What if many of, our, what if many of us are losing physically, spiritually, and emotionally because we're holding on to a lot? Not a lot as in so much, but a lot as in someone God called us to disconnect from. And it may be painful, and it may hurt, and you may be lost, and you may be out there. If you feel in your heart of hearts that God called you to do that, if there is, watch this, put this in your notes, a promise on the, a guaranteed promise on the other side of the detachment, you got to trust God. That's why I don't believe staying together in a marriage just because you don't want a divorce ain't an answer. There are certain times and certain situations where you got to make a detachment. You are forfeiting your destiny because you're worried about people who just as unhappy. 
<laughs> no, no. Abram separating from Lot provides us some core principles. I'm going to give you three principles and we're going home. Is that okay? Principle number one, put this in your, put this in your notes. Healthy expectations. Healthy expectations. What if the lot in your life is showing up as present frustration because of past expectations? That's good. Healthy expectations. Put this in your notes. The unhealthiest expectations are unaddressed expectations. I'm asking people now, what you want from me? I tell me, what you want from me? I can't do that for you. I had a talk with Terrell yesterday. I was real strong. Hey, so-and-so, 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 so-and-so. Being very clear, so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. This is what I can't do. I can't make you so-and-so. I'm going to try to give every door so-and-so. This is what so-and-so, so-and-so. He said, all right, all right, there we go. We, we done had that talk. You know what I'm saying? We done had that talk. We done had that talk. What else you, well, what else you need from me? Okay, hey, what's going on, baby? What's going on, baby? I had a talk with my boys. Hey, I know y'all want to be D1 football players. I'm going to be very clear. As of right now, you don't deserve it. I'm never going to lie to you. You ain't got enough plays. You ain't put enough work in. Not fast enough. Not big enough. Not strong enough. What you going to do with it? Are you going to take that, go upstairs and say, man, dad said I ain't bad enough. Or are you going to wake up in the morning when you go to workouts, walk in there with a different attitude? You know what they said to me? Oh, it's go time now. So now throughout the night, all I hear is machines going. Clink, 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 music playing. Whole room stank. Every time I, I see bands in there where they just doing curls, all they do, and now when they walk around the house, I'm even walking around the house like, send me a picture today. They took me a picture in his jersey, and he did this little thing in his jersey with fresh off of curls. I just told him, hey man, you good boy. But you want to know what? I'm giving him real expectation. Because many of us was athletes in high school, and for some reason we thought Alabama was just going to show up. Nobody told us you got to have a highlight tape. You got to be on Rivals. You got to do so-and-so, so-and-so. So, so DP, our senior year, now we depressed because we thought out of nowhere Coach K was going to show up and didn't even realize what it... So now I'm at least giving him realistic expectations. Y'all don't like me today. Colli <laughs> Colloquially, we would say... A closed mouth don't get fed. This statement simply means unexpressed expectations won't get met. Unexpressed expectations won't get met. Unexpressed. In every area of my life, I'm expressing my expectation. Whether you can meet it or not, that's up to you. And, and if you just flat out tell me, no, I can't do that. Then you just, you just told me the truth. So now I can in turn say, okay, 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 but well, can you do this? It's a negotiation. Well, can you do this? No. Then we get to the point where neither one of us are serving a purpose in each other's life. Oh, it may be time for us to separate. And that's real. I'm in negotiations and talks on so many levels right now with this building. I walked into this building for the first time five years ago. It was nine, almost $10 million for this and the other property. And I told them, I said, no, I don't have so-and-so. So are y'all willing? No. They laughed me out the building. I said, oh, okay, set an alarm in my phone every year. I'm going to come back to this place and ask. And I would drive by every year and be like, oh, still empty. Oh, still empty. Then after a while, when they ran out of options, what they were asking met my expectation. It's unexpressed. Number two, you can play softly, honest evaluations. Honest evaluations. Abram had to evaluate what he needed for who he was becoming. He had to evaluate what he needed for what he was becoming. I want to ask you this question. I want you to pray about it all week. Do I currently have what I need for who I'm becoming? That's rich. That's rich, right? I'm talking to engineers now. So my next couple hires, I want an on-staff engineer, qualified engineer who mixes, masters, does everything. That's what I want. They're coming in next week. They're looking at certain rooms to see where I'm putting. I want, I want three studios in my church. Two, a A room, a B room, that's small, a big C room that everybody can do anything in. And our sanctuary is currently nothing but a live studio. 
multi-track everything, the best of what we need to do. Let's knock it out, do what we got to do. Because I'm realizing there's too much power coming from this stage to not have something in place that when God moves, it's boom. No, I know what I need. If I'm saying he going to produce for the world, I'm saying he going to play for the world. That means God forbid somebody call and say, I need so-and-so, so-and-so. No, they got a key. They press the button, boom. They go in that studio, knock out what they need to knock out. They ain't got to spend no money. They ain't got to do nothing. It's a benefit of being who they connected to. They, they overhead. See, what I'm discovering is if I can't give you a lot, I can cut out a lot for you. That's what I'm trying to do. I already know where I want my podcast rooms and my mic set up, yada, yada. So when, when somebody decides to do a teaching, a four-week teaching session or a three-week teaching session, we got that right there. Let's go. You've been faithful. You connected. You committed. Let me help with that. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. I'm trying to figure out what do I need for what I'm becoming. I said things like, I'm the city's pastor. I really feel in my heart God is calling me to pastor this generation of creatives. I believe that. I believe that. I believe that's why he's putting me in certain rooms and let me do certain things. And I'm trying to help you realize Abram had to evaluate who was around Abram that may not need access to Abraham. Y'all missed that. Because you do know Abram becomes Abraham. So Abram, who is the present, had to think about Abraham, who is the future. And he had to think about, yo, they can't come with me to that season. Abram is a father. Abraham is the father of many nations. So if they can't handle sharing me with them, they're not going to... I love you, but you can't handle my expansion. Either that my mother. That's rich, ain't it? And what I've discovered is the people you know the most can't see it. They're too close. There needs to be a new boundary. TJ said something to me the other day that messed me up. He was like, man, I started to call you, but I can't just act like you ain't Pastor Mike Jr. And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, you know, we're not, we, what we're not finna do is not act like you ain't Pastor Mike Jr. I'm like, what do you mean? He was like, come on now. Like, no, no, I see it. I'm not finna just treat you like you're not him. And I was like, man, come on, man. No, I had, I was so honored because he had placed the boundary because he saw who God was come, crafting me to be. But then I had to move the boundary out the way. No, come here. See, there are certain people, let Candace call me. I need to talk to you right now. Uh-oh, come here. Door open, boom, boundary, come in. Slam door behind you, boom. Somebody else call, I need to talk to you right now. Get with Leslie. Get with Leslie. I don't feel bad for that. I don't feel bad for that. I got to guard my peace. I suffer with ADH. So if anything goes wrong or shifts my emotions, I'm done for the rest of the day. I have to guard certain things that I know is wrong with me. So when I'm in the mode to go deep emotionally, I can go deep emotionally. I'm one of those people that if I go deep emotionally with you, I can't do nothing else for the rest of the day. That whole day, all I'm going to do is mourn. The Bible says mourn with those who mourn. I'm going to cry all day. In the morning, I'm doing a funeral for one of my best men. Deacon Lester, and I'm going to be with him and his family at 10 o'clock. Oh, that, that's a mind place you have to be in, in a sense. To hug somebody and say, I understand when you really don't. My daddy, my daddy down the street. My mama down the street. So I'm learning in this season of my life, Mike, help put boundaries in place so the future me can be proud. Number three, let's go home. Hard eliminations. Abram had to eliminate access that could become a doorway to going back home. Ooh. He had to eliminate access that could be a doorway to going back home. Lot represents strong connections of the past that God wants to shift, but you allow to stay. Jesus. And sometimes we can't find the right people until we eliminate the wrong people. I want to pray. Can y'all stand with me? I want to pray for anybody listening to me right now who's struggling with boundaries. Struggling with boundaries. I'm a football fan. And Karan, you're a football fan. You know this. 
you're a ball player, basketball player. Perhaps as you were a left tackle in football, you know about football. And you know this better than anybody, Bravis, playing left tackle for two years in Florida. You know that if you don't stay in bounds, the ref gonna blow the play what? Dead. Did y'all catch that? If you don't stay in bounds, the ref gonna do what? Throw the play dead. You ever seen somebody running the ball and they break loose, and out of nowhere you hear a whistle. Then they go to the replay and they say, oh, they stepped outside the boundary. On this side of the boundary, go right here. On this side of the boundary, I can watch the game. On this side of the boundary, I can play the game. And you know what I discovered? The people who play in the game, spending too much time worried about the Negroes talking about the game. You may not be where you want to be, but you at least in the game. Here they ain't never took a risk, never stepped out on faith trying to talk you. See, what does a hater do? A hater tries to talk you off or out your, your game. And what I'm saying in this season of your life, get some boundaries. Your relationship would be better if you had boundaries. Your career would be better if you had boundaries. Your faith would be better if you had boundaries. Your money would be better if you had boundaries. Your health would be better if you had boundaries. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak the faith to not just create, but the strength to maintain boundaries. Because God, many of us have placed them up. The problem is we keep pulling them down. And God, you're calling us to be a great nation. You're calling us to be more than whatever we see. God, for those who share their heart on Devo Energy, Every week, they bless thousands of people. That's a responsibility to the people who lead worship. Every week, they worship and lead people into his presence by the thousands. God, help us who are submitted to God, us who give of our gifts, give of our time, our talent, and our treasure. Help us to create better boundaries so we don't forfeit what you're calling us to be. God, I thank you, and I pray even in this season as we continue to grow in God, we won't lay our destiny on the altar of right now. We won't lay the promises of God on the altar of familiarity, that we don't allow what's comfortable to become a crutch. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that what you have for them is for them, and it won't miss them. It's in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Clap your hands right there, man. Was that a great word today? Listen, wherever you're watching from right now, I want to admonish you and encourage you to set some healthy boundaries in your life. I see principles throughout the Bible that we can take and make applicable to our everyday life. That whenever there is no boundary, we become irresponsible. And boundary is not about rejection. It's about responsibility. You're healing right now. You need to set some boundaries. What's a healthy boundary for you? You don't need to be dating right now. Why are you dating while you're healing? You're allowing somebody, dating while you're healing is the equivalent to allowing somebody in an operating room before the surgeon closes you up. You're exposed. You got wounds. You got, you're not ready to be touched. They're ready to be spoken to, ready to be around. You're sensitive. Set a boundary. Right now, maybe you keep saying, I'm going to buy a house. You need to set a boundary. Protect your credit. Save your money. Set boundaries. Boundaries. Only the immature and the bitter view boundaries as punishment. Only the immature and the bitter view boundaries as punishment. When a person really loves you and you both have a clear conversation about what you feel and what you desire, they can't help but respect the boundaries that you're trying to place in your life. And I want to speak by faith that God's given you the strength to do just that. I love you so much. I'm praying for you. I truly believe what God has for you is for you. Whatever you do, do not miss next Sunday virtually. We're closing out the Courage to Commit series. I have the keys with the final principle. 
the final principle, and you don't want to miss it. I love you. If you're giving today, you know how to give. You can text I Rock with the amount you wish to give to 28950. It's right there on your screen to all of my tithers. Continue to tithe to all of my givers. Continue to give. And to everybody who's not, just continue to keep watching and loving God. That's between you and him. I want to speak by faith. God is about to bless those who have committed good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. If you think about it, a tithe is a boundary. He said, give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Then if you keep reading, it talked about the different things that tries to infiltrate the boundary. Tithing is a boundary. It protects the rest of what God is giving you. So I love you. I'm praying for you. Happy Father's Day to every father. Can we give it up for all the fathers, man? I mean that everything I am and everything I'll ever be is because of Michael McClure Sr., hands down best father in the whole wide world. When we didn't have nothing, he was incredible. When he got a little something, he was incredible. He's always been consistent. So I love you, Dad. Darius, and I greatly appreciate you for all that you've been and the countless example that you have been to us. We love you so much. I speak by faith. This will be a blessed week for you. I pray jobs and better jobs, raise and bonuses, sales and commission, scholarships, whatever it is you need, more clients, more bookings, whatever it is, it's coming to you right now. You ought to type and shout, I receive that. God, I pray your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. We are Rock City. I love y'all. See you next week. God bless you. Wow. Yes, God. Wow. What an incredible Ooh. word. Yeah. Listen, so powerful, so mm -hmm. awesome. And uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I love when a word challenges me yes. in that way. It makes me look not outward, but makes me look inward. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we're getting with these keys, mm. the keys that are unlocking the blessings and the promise yes, that God, God has for us. And you're watching, you're saying, you know what? I just feel something. There's something about the stream, mm. something about this church, about mm. the message I heard today mm. that I want to give my life to Christ or I want to become a part of this ministry. Uh, the information is on the screen. You can text home home to 28950. That's home to 28950. We would love to welcome you. We would love to have you. And if you're giving today, yep. the reason we're able to reach so many people is because That's of right. your generosity. The principle of generosity yeah. simply states it comes from a heart that's willing to, to give, give to yeah. a life that freely, freely. gives. Uh, and so if you're giving, game, yeah, you know, yeah. I've, been, you know, I've been with the Lord lately. <laughs> and if you want to give, their the, the, the ways are right there on the screen. Yeah. Uh, you have your favorite way you like to give. Yeah. Then text to give. I rock the amount to 28950. Yes, yeah. I rock the amount to 28950. And don't forget tomorrow. Yes. I got to turn it up a little bit. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, 721 uh -huh. a.m. It's D. Bo. Bo Energy. energy make sure you are locked in with us on youtube and facebook once again to all the yeah. fathers happy father's happy day father's and day. we love you we appreciate love your you. sacrifices yeah. uh all that you do uh, if you're a father like, yeah. you know, like you said earlier a coach a mentor yeah. a Sunday school teacher whatever it is if you're impacting the lives of those children or whoever's around yeah. you we love you we thank god for and you and shout out to all the fathers of the staff right yeah so we got t.o t.o yeah who, Bradvis. Bradvis. Travis. Of course, you, Pastor, Pastor Darius. Darius. Yep. Um, who, Rod. Yeah. You said, yep. of course, me, because I got the most kids. I said, <laughs> of course, me. Okay. Ooh. Terrell. Terrell, yes. Yes. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, anybody else? I think that's everybody. If we forgot anybody, Charles, yeah. listen, we growing. Yeah. And it's then we hiring, growing. so the fathers that are on the way. Yep, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Pastor Darius. Yep. Yeah, we said him. him. Yeah, we yeah, we said him. And so, um, <laughs> well, what we're going to do I'm now is we get ready to go. But listen, we want you to make sure, once again, that you do tune in tomorrow morning, 721 yeah. a.m. Central Standard Time, yes. uh, because we're going to talk about this word all week long yeah. and how we can apply it to our daily lives. No greater way to start your day than with the word of God, with That's time right. with God, the devoted time with God. Mm. Uh, I love you. We appreciate you yeah. so much. We can't wait. Until next time, God bless you. Peace. Peace.